our pleasure. So we will move now on to our first set of presentations on the theme of student rep communities. So this series of presentations and lightning talks will focus on online student rep communities, exploring how course reps and lead reps have come together in online spaces. We will hear three presentations, one after the other, after which we will have 10 minutes for questions. So our first presenter is Natalie Hay, Academic Engagement Coordinator at Edinburgh University Students Association. Natalie will be sharing with us her experience of using Microsoft Teams to support their program reps. Can everyone see that? Perfect. Perfect, thank you very much. Um, so yeah, my name is Natalie, I'm the Academic Engagement Coordinator at Edinburgh University Students Association. My pronouns are she, her. Um, as part of my role, I coordinate our support and training development for our programme representatives, as well as our elected school representatives. So before I go on to how we have been supporting rep communications and community during COVID-19, I very briefly just wanted to touch on what we have previously done to engage with the reps as well. So we previously engaged with reps through a variety of methods, which all had their pros and cons. For example, our main communication method was using emails and virtual learning environments, both of which went to everyone, but we found that reps didn't really engage with it and there was a limited opportunity for reps to engage with each other as well. We also had Facebook groups, so this was reliant on reps adding themselves to this group. And of course, in some countries, this platform is banned, so it was definitely not accessible to all, but it did provide a really quick way to communicate with the reps um, on particularly some short notice things. Over the past few years, with the introduction of our leadership and representation hub on the campus, we did see more reps coming in and having a chat with us, either as a group or on a one-to-one -one basis. Again, this was limited when we have over 1,500 student representatives. We did see an increase of our reps attending our events since we had our representation system review a couple of years ago, and this did help create a lovely rep community. However, these were often expensive to cater for. And again, with the increasing quantity of our online learners, it wasn't accessible as we weren't equipped technology-wise at that time to have them join us digitally as well. So going into this year, we initially had concerns regarding the lack of opportunities for reps to connect with us, with each other, alongside how we could best support them through what was going to be a very challenging year and would require or would be very overwhelming with the continual online demand that was required of them. We also had concerns about how to support our, our rep community in terms of socialisation and networking opportunities, which our previous in-person events created. However, these worries in COVID-19 did prompt us to kind of completely redevelop our communication and support for both staff and reps, um, which we could use in the digital landscape. So, we decided to use a new platform for our reps by creating a Microsoft Teams area, which provided us with a essential hub for them to connect with us at the Student Association, as well as with their fellow reps. So what we call the Academic Representation Forum is a space for both program and school representatives, and it replicated some of that rep community that occurred through in-person events, and it has been really successful this year. The forum is set up with both public and private individual channels. So for example, all of our program and school representatives are in the general channel, and this is one that we use most often to communicate with all reps with information and further opportunities. We also have specific channels for all undergraduate representatives and all another for all of our postgraduate representatives. And then there's also private channels which bring together all school representatives and all the school and programme representatives in each school throughout the university. So you can see an example of that on the left hand side of the screen, how that might be split. It was really easy for us to set this up before the start of semester one. It took perhaps less than an hour um, and we already had access to this platform through our organisation and through our conversations with the university, we could see that they were using this within their programmes and their structures as well. So we thought it would tie on nicely with what was already happening. Okay. As part of our representation system, reps were recruited by the university and then were registered with us from individual schools. So as part of our induction process for reps, we added them onto the teams area as they came through to us. Due to this process over both of the semesters, we had about 1,420 reps accessing the space um, and the support available throughout the year. We also made a very conscious effort within the Student Association and with our area to embed us into our structures and we relied on this as the main communication method with the reps, 
We also initially used this at the very beginning of the role with rep training as well. So I've attached some pictures of how this has been used by reps um, and by staff as examples. So firstly, by building the community of reps, it was really lovely to see hundreds of reps wanting to introduce themselves in the roles at the very beginning of the semesters. They also used this to find out who reps were across the university and then they started collaborating more on projects and events. So for example, reps were asking for guidance on holding meetings with students or collaborating on potential student council motions that they wanted to submit. Um, we have also personally found that reps reached out to us more at the Student Association too. So it's become much more of a two-way engagement platform rather than what we had previously, which was very much us sending out information but limited in terms of getting that back. So an example of that would be our program, uh, sorry, our Vice President Education asked reps to complete a quick consultation regarding the hybrid teaching provisions for semester two. Uh, we had a few hundred responses on the survey or on the consultation, but what was more encouraging was the improved dialogue from reps engaging with us on the platform and keeping the conversation going throughout the next couple of months. So that was from replies on the posts, reactions, direct messaging, inputting into the conversation with us and with each other as well. The forum also able, enables us to quickly share information with academic representatives and answer their questions. So this was particularly useful during training or when we advertised other development opportunities for them throughout the year. A lot of reps would also post quick questions to us, the sabbatical officers, and like I said, of other reps, so getting opinions for how they, you know, experienced reps would maybe go about doing certain things. This area also gave school reps easy access to their programme representatives and helped build the community amongst them um, at the school level, which we previously found difficult to support. School reps were a lot more visit visible to programme reps and they asked for more input on their work, posted updates from meetings such as the student staff liaison committees, um, student council, or from their school or other college committees that they were involved with as well. At the Students Association, this also gave us an insight into the school level discussions that we normally wouldn't have been privy to as well. So what have we learned from using the Academic Representation Forum? So we have seen great engagement from both programme and school representatives. As you can see on the picture I've attached on the Teams Analytics, we have seen around 1,290 active users, which roughly is over about 90% of our representatives, which is absolutely amazing. Um, as I mentioned earlier, reps are also more aware of us as staff and how we can support them. So they've been getting in touch with us directly or tagging us in posts, which is really encouraging. Some of the topics we have seen from this year include reps wanting to know um, or wanting to know how to access and use more data that's already available to them, such as NSS or course evaluation questionnaires. There's also queries around particular issues that they might be facing or reps asking us to look at their surveys to ensure that they aren't biased or that they were relevant to the student learning experience. We did encounter a few challenges. So during the peak times, such as when rep training was occurring at the start of the semester, we received quite a lot of messages. So it was difficult to keep on top of it to start with. Um, we do have a good understanding of when peak times will be going forward, so in future we should be able to pre-book time in our calendars to respond to these messages and make sure that everything is running smoothly. Reps would also post about school specific events such as the student staff liaison committees, which did confuse other reps initially from other schools as they thought they didn't get that information or they were missing out on important communications, so it took a little bit of time just to kind of clarify that aspect. We also noticed reps posting out of hours and at weekends, and this could be due to a variety of reasons for when reps you know, blocked out time for the role because they're in different time zones, both of which is absolutely fine. However, it was a bit of a worry to us about rep expectations. We tried to get back to reps um, if any questions for us within the day during the week. But if they were posting on a Saturday, for example, we wouldn't obviously see that until the Monday. So in response to that, we will ensure that this information is communicated to them clearly through our induction package at the beginning of their roles. And we'll make sure we have a clear system for signing on and signing off. So in the future, so reps are fully aware of when people are around and what they can expect from us as well. So we're currently collecting our handover documents from reps this year, which includes a small section of feedback from their experiences as a rep. So we should get more of an idea about how they have found this and how we can maybe enhance this for the future. We definitely think it's been successful. So we're keen to keep running this for future years, even when we do go back to continuing in-person support as well. 
From what we have experienced, we think reps are more engaging with the role, particularly collaborating with each other, and we're definitely keen to continue enhancing our rep community and support. So I've included my email address on the screen, so please do feel free to get in touch with me after today if you have any more questions, um, but do let me know if you have any during the Q&A as well. And um, thank you everyone for listening and inviting me today. Thank you so much. Uh, that was a really great uh, presentation. And yes, we will be coming to, to questions after the, the last speaker of this session. Um, if you are able to stop sharing, um, we'll move on to the next speaker. Uh, our second presenter is Irina Christina Bogdan, Student School Officer for the School of Creative and Cultural Business at Robert Gordon University. Irina will be sharing with us her use of mural board as a method of collecting feedback. Over to you. Hello everyone, can you see my slide? Yep, all good. Thank you. So um, thank you, Alex. My name is Irina Kristina Bogdan, and I'm the student school officer of the School of Creative and Cultural Business at Robert Gordon University. <clears throat> Today, I would like to talk to you about how I created an online community for student representatives using Miro. My presentation will be split in three main sections what the issue was, how it was solved, and what comes next. But essentially, I'll be sharing my experience of collecting student feedback with Miro to help students and staff develop solutions in partnership. You'll find out what Miro is, why I chose to use it, and how I used it. I hope it will inspire you to, to give Miro a try. And if, if you tweet about it, make sure to tag me at Irina C. Bogdan. So let's start with what the issue was. Part of my SSO role is to collect feedback from reps within my school and communicate it to staff for relevant enhancements to be made. However, the issue was low student engagement due to COVID-19 lockdown. We couldn't meet on campus, so we had to build a digital community, establish effective online communication with reps, and increase partnership. We wanted to know how the student learning experience was during remote learning. So to gather feedback, I created a survey, but to be honest, I feel like we are all bombarded by surveys for different research projects anyways. So um, as survey fatigued as I was myself, I, I gave up on that method. I, I wanted something new, fun, exciting, interactive that would look good and would be fast and easy to use. I had the experience of using Google Jamboard, so I tried that but um, it, it actually had limited features for what I needed. So I knew I, I had to use something else. So how did I solve this problem? Well, as Alistair have, has mentioned earlier, platforms used need to be suitable and known to students. So I used email, Campus Moodle Forum, and Microsoft Teams, which of course can be argued is still fairly new, but now we, we got more used to it. But apart from those ones, I use Mentimeter and Miro to give reps more choice uh, to engage. So Miro is an online visual collaboration platform for real-time and asynchronous teamwork. It is a complex whiteboard that allows you and your team to design, create agile boards, work, work on projects, brainstorm, and much more. So I'm a visual learner and I like organization and color coding. And this year I had a team of 60 reps. So Miro was exactly what I needed. As I was gathering feedback on the student learning experience, I naturally used the SLE model created by Sparks to simplify reps work. Additionally, I took into consideration six factors, as you can see on the slide. Essentially, I took measures to ensure it was a fast method to input data into. It encouraged reps to participate. It represented students. It was clear to understand. It was uh, accessible and the feedback gathered was relevant. To find out more details on each factor, um, you can actually read my case study, which I'll post in the chat box uh, once I finish the presentation. But let's have a look at the board now. This is how Miro looks like. 
Side note, um, I filmed the technical walkthrough uh, for reps to explain how to use the board, uh, hence my face at the top. <laughs> um, as you can see, I depicted the seven elements of the scene learning experience using color coordinated post-it notes. And at the bottom, I included uh, reminders of how to deliver effective feedback, the course rep cycle, and the resource pack with a bank of questions rep could ask their peers. From the toolbar on the left, uh, reps were able to add as many sticky notes as they wanted to and choose the right color uh, based on the SLE model. After introducing this method, we recorded 92 entries throughout the year. Each semester, I summarized the feedback and presented it at various meetings to, the, to be discussed. Then staff members acted on it and shared their work with us, uh, closing the feedback loop on Miro this way. Collecting feedback using this method, method is how I innovated this year. But I was just thinking, as I'm graduating soon, my role is coming to an end. So how will it be ne next year? What will happen after I leave? Will anyone care about Miro? <laughs> well, it turns out that both staff and fellow students across the university and students association appreciated my initiative showing interest in learning how they can use it as well for the same purpose. So um, both um, Delta and the School of Creative and Cultural Business, which I represented, um, were very interested, as well as other schools um, at RGU. But as I mentioned at the beginning, beginning, Miro can be used for other purposes too. Indeed, I noticed that some of the reps started using the platform for their coursework. Also, RG was very interested to find out how students see blended learning next year. So I created another board. The feedback collected will inform the pedagogical, the pedagogical approaches in the future. So this, this really um, helped me understand um, how, how we can uh, move forward because it's very important to listen to students and, and see what challenging um, they are faced with because we come from so many different backgrounds and we really need to, to be open to everyone's opinions and to see how they see so we can move forward uh, together and we can work in partnership to develop um, enhancements that will really benefit everyone in our community. So this is how I use Miro to create a digital community and collect students' feedback. I really hope you have enjoyed my presentation. Um, please make sure to check out my case study where I go into more detail. Um, thank you for listening. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have and connect with you on social media. I'll, I'll post the link now to the, Miro, to the case study. Thank you. That's brilliant. Thank you so much, Irina. We will come on to questions just to put a reminder in again uh, after the next speaker who is the final presentation of this theme, which comes from the University of West of Scotland Students Association. So I'm pleased to hand over to Ashwarya Tiku, Vice President Education and Sabina Lowry, Student Represent Representation and Policy Coordinator to tell us about their online student rep elections and student council. So take it away. Hi, so I'm Sabina, I'm the Student Representation and Policy Coordinator at UWS. Can everyone see the screen? Yes, we can. Perfect. Great. Um, so thanks for that from Natalie and Irina. Those were both incredible case studies. Um, I am going to talk a bit about the sort of rep system as a whole, as an online kind of system that interacts. So we're going to talk about elections, some of the community building, and of course, our student council, which has all been online this year. So pre-COVID, <laughs> And I know that's hard to think back to. We were moving our elections online and I think more importantly, centrally run by the students union as opposed to in class by staff. Um, in order to solve some of these problems, uh, we quite often ran training and said, and so why did you become a rep? And people would say, oh, my, my lecturer told me to. And we're like, it's not, it's not really how it's meant to work, you guys. Like, it's definitely a student-led thing. So that was an issue. It took a long time, a lot of the time, to get 
uh, student rep names to us. And that delay is huge. You lose so much engagement if a, if a student thinks they've become a rep four weeks before you even get their name from the school and a week before they get communication for training. So that was something we really wanted to, to help. And again, reps didn't really connect the becoming a rep with the students union necessarily. And so were confused sometimes as to why we were contacting them because they considered it something the lecturers or the university had ownership over. Um, it was also quite difficult for students to find out who their reps were. There were difficulties for reps in contacting their cohorts. And those are two things that we still have some teething problems with because of multiple data issues I will not go into, uh, but that are under control now. Um, and of course, there was a huge administrative burden because quite often a lecturer would facilitate the election or volunteering of a student to do the thing. And then it would go to someone within the school and then it would eventually come to us. And so there were so many people within the chain that it took a really long time. Um, so as you can see, we moved our student rep elections online. It was quite late in the summer. So I hope that it will be even better next year because we've got a lot more run in to keep staff informed of what the process is. But the number of reps we recruited by the deadline doubled. Um, and that deadline is set in partnership with the university and with schools. It's not like we just set that as a student's union. And even when it was agreed, you can see the numbers from the previous academic year were, were really low. So we were very happy that we, we increased that. And it's obviously had this huge knock-on effect on the number of students trained. Um, we were pretty happy with 6% voter turnout. It's half what we get for our sabbatical elections. Um, so for the first time out of the gate, again, pretty, pretty pleased with that. And the reps who are elected online are more likely to have engaged with us than the reps who were chosen in class or elected in class or whatever happened in class that we didn't see. Um, so that's been really great. And I think one of the huge benefits of running the system online was we had that cohort of 302 reps who were immediately getting the same information at the same time. It was much easier to manage our communications because we knew all of them had had the first email. Whereas previously when things trickled in, do you send a reminder for the rep training when half of the reps on your list didn't get the first information? And that becomes so, so difficult to manage. So it was much easier to have them in as like a coherent cohort right at the start. Um, so one of the things we did like Natalie was add them to a Teams page um, with similar engagement levels. So 90% of our reps have been active in the last 90 days and 60% in the last 30 days. Previously, we had a Facebook page, which I don't have the exact stats for, but it was nowhere near that. I like I know that for a fact. Um, we had to introduce a stuff and nonsense channel because there was such kind of desire for sharing kind of pet fun content. And it meant that the space that was for sort of announcement representation stuff was you do an important announcement and then it would be like seven posts up the page because there would be lots of dog photos. Um, but we didn't want to lose the dog photos, so we moved them to their own space. And this is either Jet or Inky. That student rep has two dogs that look exactly the same and I don't know which one's which, but I'm sure they're both good dogs. Um, that space also allowed for peer support. So quite often reps would answer the questions from other reps before staff got to them, which, which frankly is the dream. Um, it's perfect <laughs> if it works that way. We would much rather students were talking to students and supporting each other than needing a staff member on hand all of the time. Um, and we also ran some sort of online social events. The one that worked best was our Christmas party. And we gave the reps the opportunity to deliver their own activities. So one of the reps ran a breakout room for Jackbox games, which you play on your phone and you have a centralized big screen, which they did through screen sharing and things like that. 
Um, and then another colleague ran sort of more traditional party games and I ran the main chat, which was just a chat hangout space. Um, and I think the thing we've learned from doing those is the importance of scaffolding. It's so hard online for just, you can't have any side conversations. It's very difficult. The scaffolding for the activities is definitely kind of necessary. And that had really great feedback from the reps as well. We have also, like everyone else, moved our student council online. Um, so we're a little different in the, in, in the before times, we had five campuses. So student council has always been quite difficult to deliver um, in person for us, especially with our London campus, because we don't always have the resource to have a staff member in London to support those reps. So it's been quite unequal. Um, for a while, we had a student intern and that was really helpful, um, but we would need to get a staff member to each campus. The VC was okay, <laughs> but sometimes inconsistent. Uh, and it took a lot of staffing, a lot of resource to run that kind of VC between five campuses. Um, so the move online, happened because of COVID, but it's probably something that we will keep because we have had increased attendance, um, almost double from where we were two years ago. The first council of the year, we had over 100 reps, which is great um, for us. And it's allowed us to support students in ways we didn't necessarily consider. So I am usually there supporting the student chair kind of in the background, helping to sort of manage the questions in the chat and just supporting them but then we have another staff member who can take minutes and another staff member who essentially monitors the chat can answer easy questions can put definitions in or let people let the students know what particular departments do and things like that um, and that's something we hadn't considered the value in having those two communication streams going at the same time and of course that also gives the students a choice of engagement methods because they can private message a staff member, they can do react, they can put questions in the chat box, they don't necessarily have to speak or put the camera on to, to participate. Um, and I guess what, for me, one of the things that I think means it's working is that at the end we tend to say, if you want to stick around and have a chat, uh, we can do. And I tend to find myself then an hour after the meeting being like, we've been on the, on the Zoom call for three hours, like I need to, need to leave now um, and that's it's nice that there's a kind of desire to connect to kind of debrief and talk about the session afterwards so it's worked really well and you can see see we've had some really good feedback from students about it um, so going forwards just areas for development um, I really want to get the SABs and the school officers involved in welcoming the new course and divisional reps who will be elected at the start of term one, kind of on the team's page, because I think having that real coherent flow of information through the reps at all levels is something we could improve. And it'll also really double down on that we're a community and this is the, you know, this is the sort of community and group you're entering into. Um, promoting, we've got a representation at UWS roadmap that's just been approved by one of the university committees, which sets out practically the responsibilities of the student union staff members, the university staff members. And I think that's gonna be really helpful in ensuring that our university colleagues are informed and promote the elections as they're running, as opposed to maybe the student rep system as existed when they first started working at UWS. Um, we plan to continue the online student council from a staffing support point of view, especially with our five campuses. It's, it makes a lot more sense. It's a lot easier to support students. And we plan to offer online and in-person options for training and social events going forwards to give that choice and flexibility that was talked about in the first session today. Um, so lots, lots of learning that's happened this year um, and lots of things that have been sort of accelerated by COVID, even if we don't want to keep all of it, it's given us a space to experiment with what works and what doesn't online. Um, and like I say, there's a lot that's been 
been good. So happy to take any questions. Um, That's brilliant. Thank you all so much for your presentations. We've got 10 minutes now for some questions. So we'll try and do one per each uh, speaker and see if we've got some extra time before the comfort break. So question for Natalie from uh, Megan at Sparks. As you move back to a hybrid in-person environment, will you continue to use the Microsoft Teams site or will you bring back any in-person elements or is this more challenging with such a large amount of reps? So it's a really good question, something that we're talking about at the moment. Um, I think initially, yes, we are, the simple answer is yes, we're going to continue the team site going forward, even when we do bring back in-person um, activities. I think having this online central hub where, you know, we can have communication, we can have resources, we can start the training and we can keep that conversation going is really valuable and we certainly don't want to lose that element. I think there's quite a bit we do need to think about how that's going to work in parallel with in-person events being brought back and um, from initial discussions I believe we are going to try and maybe keep the in-person more towards the socializing and the networking side but alongside having the teams area as well um, and I do think we'll probably keep the training in a virtual or a digital environment and um, feedback we initially got was that uh, reps felt it was more easy to access because they could just join on from wherever they are. They didn't have to get to a specific location on campus, um, but they could also go back to like, you know, the self-study module at whatever point was suitable to them. Um, so I think we're still trying to plan what that's going to look like and how that's going to work with both in person and online. Um, but yes, yeah, so we will be continuing the mix of teams forum going forward. Um, so yeah, we'll keep you all updated on how that looks like um, as we go forward as well. That's brilliant. I think that, that increase in accessibility that online spaces provide is definitely so beneficial going forward and just always. But I like that idea of the continued, the CPD, the continued professional development that reps will have of being able to go back to those self-study modules throughout the year, because we all reach those pinch points where we say, what was, what was that bit that I needed to remember for this specific situation? So yeah, no, that's brilliant. Thank you. Um, question for Arena. Um, could you say a little bit more about how staff fed back to student reps on actions taken in response to student feedback? For example, did this happen on Miro or some other space? Um, that one's from, from Carolyn from QAA Scotland. Thank you. Thank you, Carolyn. Um, I, so I summarized the feedback that I got from reps uh, on Miro, and then I presented it at uh, various meetings uh, throughout the year. And then what staff members have done, they created um boards on with, with what they worked on and then what i did was i took those boards and um, input them into miro so that this platform could be seen by all reps and this really really ensured uh, a transparency because it, it really showed uh, what staff members have worked on because i really um noticed that so many times universities do so many so much good work but students have no clue because they they are really focused on what what their class does um on what their lecturer uh, tells them but but there are so many other things going around um on a on a wider level at the university so i think getting getting um more staff members involved in our school uh, to to really show us what they've worked on um, helped us understand better what is going on um, in the university. Really fantastic. Thank you. It's, it's also so important to have things in the one place because too often, you know, you'll raise something in a, in a certain space and then they'll, they'll say, oh, we told you about it, but it's in a completely different space. No one ever uses. And you're sitting there like, well, of course we don't know that you did that. So yeah, no, that's fantastic. Creating a one-stop shop for the, for the full feedback loop. Perfect. Um, question for Sabina and Ashwarya uh, from, where is it? Uh, from Megan again, love that peer support element, Sabina. Perhaps online environments led themselves to this more. Do you think that's the case? I think it's easier to get a fast response when there is an online, an online space. Um, and I think we have seen, possibly because students have been quite lonely or found it hard to connect. Maybe we've seen a sort of stronger engagement in our online space and 
between reps and within our rep community because it's just been so necessary to connect with other humans just as this year has gone on so I think the online space gives it that kind of the ease and the accessibility and the immediacy of getting a response from another another rep but I think probably we have also lost engagement from some students who would have benefited from seeing people face to face and I think that's the importance going forwards is going to be about kind of choice because um, I know even some of our most engaged students the, the ones we've known we've seen through their whole university journey even this year they've been kind of struggling and maybe needed to put in an extenuating circumstances or ask for an extension so I think it's important while we talk about the benefits of online we don't lose or forget that we've also lost a lot this year and we need to try and put that back in somewhere for those students who've been struggling. Absolutely it's it's definitely a challenge with the isolation but I like that idea of the, the increase in accessibility but also the removal of barriers and that you wouldn't really be able to just in person say oh I, I'm having this issue and then someone from a completely different school or even a different campus in some cases being able to say well actually here's how I did it so that that collaboration has been just so much better in online spaces that we have ha access to people that we wouldn't have before um, perfect we'll go another round again because we've got some more questions this one's at, so back to Natalie this one's from me actually um, did you provide a comprehensive MS Teams training uh, for the reps and before they started? Was the thinking of Alistair's presentation, was the familiarity with the platform the key to success? I know at our institution, we really struggled to get reps engaged in sometimes. So we provided a little bit in our initial training module, which is through SWE that we sent a link directly to them. And um, so we provided a little section there about this is how we will communicate with you and how to use that. I would say that was definitely a challenge that we did experience kind of at the beginning uh, as everyone's kind of getting used to kind of the new hybrid format. I suppose one of the benefits is our university, we're, we're using this quite heavily in their, their learning and teachings and their programs as well. So it did work alongside that, but that is something that we have taken forward and we're working with the university on for next year. And actually through a phased approach over the next couple of years is a Your Voice project on providing documents or guidance for reps so how to use this, how they can set up programs so that they can use it in within their schools um, and provide that kind of space for them. So yeah, it's something that we did see and I think it, it did take a lot of kind of maybe communication to them, like, you know, this is what these channels are for. This is kind of how you can use this area. Um, but I think seeing other reps used it really helped as well. So being able to see like their school reps or other reps asking questions, it kind of it gave other reps the courage to maybe oh, this is how I can use this, or this is how I can ask about how to, to use this function. Um, but it's something that we're definitely conscious of, and hopefully by next year we will have more guidance. So reps do have a bit more um, use on how to um, use the platform. And there's so many lessons to learn that, that have been learned this year to include and just make it that much better next year. So great to hear um, on the guidance front. Uh, for coming back again to Irina, does this is more of a, a technical and specific question um but does Miro allow for engagement on the post-its themselves or is it just you post it and then there's discussion elsewhere how did that work so there is um, the possibility to add comments as well so students would post um sticky notes and then um i actually had i i had the idea of staff members coming into the board and adding comments but what, what was uh, decided was that staff members would create a um, separate um, boards um, and that I would input into, into Miro. But yes, there is the possibility of adding comments uh, for each sticky note. And um, Miro also has the ability to, to have um, video calls. So you can, you can meet um, your team and discuss the points and I think I think you would need the pro version, but I only use the um, the free one, and um, it it really it, it was the basic version um, that really helped us. Um, we didn't need too much because you know as um, 
as Alistair said, I, we really needed to make sure that students don't, you know, are not frustrated. This is a new platform that Irina has introduced. What is this? We have no clue how to use it. Uh, we are going to have a video call. We're going to add comments. We're going to add post it notes. I, I wanted it to be quite simple. Didn't want to, to confuse students. Um, but uh, yes, there are so many possibilities with Miro. Brilliant. Um, thank you so much. That's really helpful to know that it definitely sounds like a really interactive platform and definitely something people should look into. Um, one last final quick question before the comfort break. Um, we have for Sabina and Ashwarya again, um, thinking of scaffolding in online events, does it feel these events need more prep than face-to-face -face ones where the natural flow of conversation might keep things going a bit better? Thinking of those awkward spaces, awkward silences we all get in the online events. Uh, absolutely, yes. And I think sometimes when you're running them, it feels a bit like being a radio presenter. Uh, where you're sort of everyone's kind of silent and you're talking to yourself like oh hey Natalie I see you've just joined us I hope things are well with you say hi in the chat or unmute and you're kind of trying to keep the energy up the whole time by doing that so I think not necessarily in prep but in terms of input you it's much harder to just put students in a room and let them get on with it. I think there needs to be a lot more kind of support around it. And one of the things I'd like to do going forwards, and actually I think that ties into a question I just saw from Eleni about participation potentially dropping when we don't have as much of a captive audience for online engagement, um, is kind of training up lead reps and SABs and maybe some of the more engaged reps to play that role within a group, because it is a skill to learn to keep the conversation going, to pull other people in um, to, the, to the engagement. And I think to explicitly train some students up to do that would, would be a really helpful thing, both on Teams and when running digital online events. Definitely. It's Definitely an interesting one to think about for the future. Hopefully, as people become more used to the online spaces, people get a bit more comfortable because it is so new and sometimes a bit jarring in these spaces. Thank you all so much again for presenting and sharing your, your practice. It's really been fascinating and really illuminating. So I'm sure everyone here has really appreciated and loved it. Great comments in the chat. We'll go for a quick comfort break, um, 10 minutes thereabouts. So please be back to restart at 11.20 um, and please do take the chance to contribute to our Padlet. Thank you. <laughs>